Hey guys, welcome to CarCast. I'm Matt, the moderator, DeAndre, here with Bill Goldberg. Uh, Zoom in vroom, vroom. from uh, from, uh, from the garage, from the garage out in Texas. How's yeah, man, look, I, got, I put a different one in the background. I figured I'd switch it up a little bit, so I put the demon in the background. Yeah. Or yeah, I just changed the color of the other car, but no, it's the demon. The demon looks good, and uh, when we when we chatted a couple weeks ago, the other one is back, right? The black car. Yeah, yeah, from, it's still uh, black, thankfully. Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was talking to my buddy Matt Kutcher, the the stunts and special effects guy. And he went with me over there, and it looks like Matt's gonna end up buying the car because. First and foremost, he likes it. But second, it was such a great story of our trip yeah. over there. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's the sentimental value of the thing at this point. But, yeah, that was, a, that was a debacle. But we'll move on. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> there's a, a couple of things popping up in the, uh, in the automotive news. But uh, the thing that I want to kind of jump on right away, because this one is – is the most exciting i think is uh our friends That's over at uh speed core and uh classic recreations are teaming up to make basically an all carbon fiber body uh 67 mustang a gt500 now the guys from classic recreations uh i've known them for a long time known them from year for years driven some of their cars uh we they had this uh orange 67 Mustang that they did called Villain with a with a Coyote engine. Uh, it was it was just incredible manual transmission. Uh, it was at the SEMA show. It was in the Center Force Clutches booth, I believe, and it had sort of a Center Force Clutches orange on it. <clears throat> and uh, I got the opportunity to to film a bunch of stuff with that car. So grab my buddy uh, Robert Angelo, who was a uh director producer he created jay Lowe's garage with jay he won a couple of emmys he's the only guy out there who won two emmys for creating a reality show automotive content he's just a fantastic guy good good buddy of mine and uh i think he's been on the show with us even in the past and uh <clears throat> we took that car the orange car out there <clears throat> excuse me that coyote motor must have made it you know something just awesome to play around it was uh it, it was it was, the motor was fantastic. I got to remember, I think it might even had the supercharger on it. It might've had like a Roush supercharger on it. So just incredible power. So we, we were on downtown LA. We were underneath the, you know, the, the, you know, the tunnel, the bridge by uh, the Disney theater. And we had to film some stuff down there. And it was, you know, like you, three in the morning, uh, you know, where it's easier to, to do filming and you can close certain things off and, uh, just incredible just filming this car and driving this car and then and then as the sun was coming up get all the beauty shots of this thing and uh i i loved it the car was great it was well built um you know we we did a lot of action shots with the video and the the car the car did great like we you know, we kind of got the car sideways and we kind of slid it around and and did some dramatic things you do for for film uh, and it uh, it turned out pretty great. I was so impressed with the build of it and how reliable it was and how comfortable it was and uh, everything just seemed to work on it. And and that was for a sort of a hand built prototype of a car that they were doing. Um, so, but I was I read this news about. Um, also, we've seen all their cars over at, at, at SEMA every year. They keep coming up with new stuff. They're doing first gen Mustangs and different variations on that. Uh, again, the ca the company's classic recreations. Uh, so, so, what's the extent of their what's the extent of their services? Do they do you know uh, top to bottom? They do. So, what they try to do is is it's it's not really like you have a car that you want restored. This is a a turnkey car. You go to them. You buy mm -hmm. uh, uh, like if you went to Jonathan Ward and you said, "Hey, I want a Bronco or I want one of you know one of your turnkey cars." He'll say, "Great, get in line." Uh, a, a, a good example would be like Singer Porsche. Right, you gotcha. want a Singer Porsche. Yeah. This is you want a classic recreations Mustang. I think they had a Camaro that they did as well, but they do a couple variations of the Gen One Mustangs, the '65, '66 body style. They do the uh, the the next uh, Gen, the '67s, 
uh, 68, and then they do like the 69, 70 Mach 1, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, versions. And there are, are various engine packages you can get from, from, you know, from the 302, you know, carbureted engine to a Coyote engine supercharged or mm -hmm. a, a built 427 pushrod engine with a pro charger on it if you want. And you can get, you can make a 700, 750 horsepower version of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so what was going on was, uh, I got some notes. I'm going to tell you what they told me. I reached out to them and said, Hey, I saw you guys are doing uh, carbon fiber bodies on the 67 Mustangs. What's, what's going on? Uh, what's going on with that? Cause uh, that's the press release that came out and <clears throat> they said for the past decade, uh, our team at Classic Recreations has been building Shelby Mustangs, both the 66 GT350 and the 67 GT500, fully licensed recreations of the cars, working with mm -hmm. Shelby and getting it done. Uh, and the way they've been doing it is they would have to find original steel cars, of course, and uh, get the VIN numbers, get the cars, and they would have to uh, cut out all the bad metal, restore the car, and do as much work as, as possible just to get the base platform to start doing their modifications, right? You gotta mm -hmm. restore all the metal and everything is at, uh, ahead of time. Uh, they've built hundreds of these cars over the years to all various collectors, sports, athletes. Lewis Hamilton bought one. Uh, and what they found was they've been putting about 500 hours of just metal work and body work into the cars because mm -hmm. they're just so ratty and to get them to, to the quality. So even if you rolled in a 67 Mustang that looked like it was good and it was straight, the, just the gaps in the finish don't, aren't good enough to be one of their cars. Like a modern mm -hmm. car today, all the gaps and stuff are, are good. So what they did is, is, is they built one uh, completely perfect, uh, you know, I guess their own car or a client car. They reached out to your buddy, Dave. Uh, is it Salvaggio at Speedcore? Yeah. Dave Salvaggio yep. at Speedcore and said, hey, what do you guys think about teaming up on doing a carbon fiber body? Um, it would make the car a little more special, a little more exclusive, but also help them in redoing all the body work, hundreds of hours of body work. Uh, for these cars. So they sent a perfectly built, freshly built GT500 CR, that's what they're calling the classic recreations cars, over to, uh, to Speedcorp. They did the full blue light scan, completely digitized the car, scanned the mm -hmm. whole thing, uh, then started making molds and doing all the CNC machining, you know, doing their 3D. It's nice that else. you guys can get, it's nice that you guys can get this information now because I've been uh, sitting on it for a while, man. Right. So this is, uh, <laughs> this you've probably seen in the works for a long time because you've been doing so much with Speedcore uh, on all the pieces that you've done. And I know you've sent pieces there and had it done, but yeah. All the work that goes into the scanning and the modeling and the digitizing of it and the CAD software and perfecting the molds and, and going back and test fitting the molds on the car. Uh, uh, it, it's just been a fantastic process um, and it's turning out to, to be good. And what I like about well, as, this you, as is, you can see throughout the years, I mean, uh, they've they've I, I don't want to say perfected it, but they've gotten as close to perfection as you can see with the vehicles they've been pumping out. And so, I mean, it's a it's a natural progression, number one, for I think both companies. And I think it's just the tip of the iceberg, considering they offer so many variations of different muscle cars from back in the day. Yeah, so on your cars, right? Like we 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 saw your your wide body challenger at at SEMA in the Magnaflow booth. We parked our parked our vehicles together. The new vehicles today, the tolerances are much tighter. So when mm -hmm. they go to make carbon fiber fenders or a hood, it's easier for them to make something as precise as the steel components and say it will fit almost any production car because from the factory, the tolerance. <laughs> well, yeah, are comparatively, all pretty, pretty the exact. Exactly. You know? But comparatively, though, they're exact from from 
factory wasn't even close to, you know, off tolerance these days with, with manufacturing quality, you know, I mean, look at the gaps in in every car, you know, pre 80 and then look at the gaps in these new cars. I mean, there aren't any gaps in the new cars. Yeah. Perfect back, perfect back then was extremely imperfect now. Exactly. And the, the imperfections of the early Mustangs would vary from car to car. There was a lot of room, a lot of wiggle room, you know, a fender is off a little bit. And you talk to anybody in the restoration world, uh, you talk to Bowie Stroud and, and, and any, any of the guys that we work with um, that are doing these cars, and these guys will tell you, we rather have a complete car that we need to do some metal work on than get a a Mustang or a Camaro in the door and buy repop uh, aftermarket fenders and stuff because they say well, they there's never so many reasons fit. for that. Yeah, there's so many reasons for that. You know, they never. You know that these aftermarket parts <laughs> panels. There's no, there's no way they're you're gonna have to cut, no matter what it is. You know, to an extent. So. Right. A lot of these guys say, hey, man, uh, me fixing and straightening and doing the detail work on a 1967 Fender is about the same amount of hours of buying a brand new repop Fender and getting it to fit correctly. Right. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah. it's pick, great pick that we have evil. some of the repop parts. Yeah. It, look, if you're missing a Fender or a hood or a, or a door or something and you can buy a reproduction version, that's great but it's not the choice of these builders. So I think, I think when you, you, go ahead, go ahead. ahead. I I, just, I want to hit a point afterwards. Finish. finish Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Well, I think, you know, the, the only thing that you missed, I mean, you made it sound so rosy when speed core has the ability to repop all of these or, or get molds for all of these panels or all of these existing cars, but there's, and and the 5,000 hours that goes into, you know, massaging the original metal on these original quote unquote cars. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's still a hell of a lot to be said for that original car. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, you see what, you see what I've got. I see, you know, the, the path that you lead and we're, we're all realists. I mean, there's a lot to be said for the original steel, but there's a hell of a lot to be said for something that you can drive with, you know, multiples of the horsepower of these original muscle cars and the ability for them not to overheat and blow up. So um, there's, there, you know, I, I'm just saying there's still a hell of a lot of value in that originality. So there's, there's pluses for each. You know, when you make one sound so rosy, you can't overlook the fact that, you know, you, you're an original, you're a, an original car guy also. So um, there's a hell of a lot to be said for those guys that, that massage that metal for 5,000 hours. Because I still would, honestly, I'd still rather have that car over these, you know, over the, the uh, remolded 67 all carbon fiber speed car body. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, it's apples to oranges. That's all I'm saying. Right, right. And, and especially on a car that, like you're saying, that is, that is uh, all original and you're doing a restoration. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing this, this kind of stuff on your lawman Mustang. You wouldn't be doing it. Well, no, one, on one's, original and you, one, one's original and you can't drive it and it's got an intrinsic value of its originality and you can look at it. And the other one looks just like it and it, you, you can drive it. It doesn't overheat. It's got twice the horsepower and it's a hell of a lot of fun. And, oh, it turns without, you know, sliding off the road or you can shut the door without it reverberating for 15 seconds. So yeah. there's, there's, there's value in both. That's all I'm saying. And I agree with that. And that's what these guys are, are, are what they're doing. If you, even if you look at their lineup of cars, they, they do sort of a nice restored version of the 67 and the 65 Mustangs. And then they do their hot rodded versions with the body kits and stuff on it. And that's kind of where the carbon fiber stuff uh, uh, starts to, to lend its benefit is you, you are able to go in there and get something that is a, is a bit more special. Um, not mm-hmm. only, you know, like we said, these cars are, are licensed Shelby cars, which are, which are good. It's good to have that, that official partnership. But when you go and you get your, uh, your hot rodded uh, 67 Mustang, 
the idea of getting a carbon fiber body version is kind of cool. Now, of course, the unibody underneath the skin needs to still be original. All of the components attached to it, so suspension components and things like that, but, uh, but it's still you know, a half or less of, of the body work uh, or metal work, if you will, to, uh, to make that happen because they're taking the original uh, uh, unibody and oftentimes uh, having to change it and cut it to fit up the modern day suspension and brake packages and rack and pinion steering and, and, and all that stuff. So, and they use total control products and Detroit speed and engineering. They use different packages for that stuff. But this is what they figured out is uh, they are able to do this. They are, um, uh, because the molds have to reproduce these body panels again and again and again, the molds are all billet, right? There's no, there's no like plastic or, or wood bucks or anything. They made them billet, uh, which is incredibly expensive there's a huge investment going into yeah. this going yeah we're going to make a billet but that's a one Mustang. that's a one-time investment right I, yes. I know it's a huge it's a huge investment but yeah. once you do the math you know look at supply and demand and obviously there's a lot of people that want them or they think there's a lot of people that want them so they wouldn't be spending the money or and or time or effort you know if it wasn't demand if there wasn't a demand for it Right, and because Classic Recreations has been doing this for a decade now, and they sold hundreds of cars, you're, you're right. There is, there is a case study, there is a proven report there going, hey, we, we're gonna make quite a few of these. And then these guys, they're all businessmen, they'll do the math on it and figure out how many they need to, to make to recoup it. And yeah, there's gonna be a bit of a price premium, but I think people shopping for these cars and spending this kind of money kind of understand that it's, it's an acceptable, you know, addition, right? You don't have to buy the carbon fiber cars, by the way, they're still doing the steel cars. But the result is the uh, the cars are lighter, they are stronger, and it does cut the build time in half because the carbon fiber bodies are gonna be produced at speed core, sent over to Classic Recreations, and they're gonna start doing it. They don't need to do the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of body work to make that happen. And the resulting car is 400 pounds lighter. You're talking about cars that are in the 3,000 range, 3,500, 3,600 mm -hmm. pound range already with the big upgrades, the brakes and the wheels and the Coyote engines and whatever. You're cutting 400 pounds off this car. You're, you're probably rolling around at, I don't know, 31, 32, 3,300 pounds with 700 horsepower. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, the cars, the steel cars, are around 200, 215,000 bucks. And the way this is gonna work is, there's about a, uh, the way they're figuring it out right now, it's about $55,000 on top of that. Uh, so, you know, 265, 270 gets you the carbon fiber car in a painted finish, maybe a little bit of exposed, you know, stripes or whatever. But if you wanna keep the entire carbon fiber body exposed, they polish it, UV coat it, and uh, and do a whole process on it, uh, and that's sixty five thousand. So fifty five thousand for the carbon fiber painted bodies, sixty five for the raw carbon fiber exposed, you know, finished and detailed and all that stuff. I think um, it's a kick ass option. Remember years ago when the Eleanor, when the just the the, the recreation Eleanor, not an all carbon fiber version, was going for two fifty something like that at auction. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you. So this is a bargain. A very well-built version of one of these cars has resale value. We're starting to see that now. Singer Porsches pull good resale money. Uh, Jonathan Ward Icon Broncos pull resale money, you know, and those are the turnkey cars, if you will. And I think Classic Recreations is falling into that group as well. They're pulling good money. Now, we know there's a few hot rod builders out there that now are starting to come back and, 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 their cars are hitting the, the auction block and pulling money. Ring Brother cars would get pretty good money. Boyd Coddington cars get pulled pr pretty good money. Um, and, uh, and so people are starting to see of all the, I don't know, resto mod, if you will, cars that go across the block at, at, at a Barrett Jackson, people are starting to recognize the ones that are really well built and are paying a premium for that. And you'll no see question. that. You'll see... 
you'll see two or three, as you said, Eleanor Mustangs go across the block. And the difference between our like a really good, well-built car, like the classic recreations car, and the ones that were, you know, it's a body kit and it's well, you know, it's good, it's clean, it's a nice build, nothing super over the top, 302 motor, you know, five-speed transmission, mm -hmm. nothing really six-speed or the trick suspension and, and the amount of body work and paint quality. You know, you'll see one go for 85,000 and you'll see one go for 220,000, mm -hmm. right? And you're watching it on TV and you're like, I don't know, it looks like the same car to me and one of them is two and a half times the price. And but you, if you're then, there, but if you're there, you know of all people, you can spot it like that. You you do, you really do. It just starts with the paint alone, and like you said, the fit and the finish, the gaps on the doors, and even just how it closes. When you start to see all of those details, you really notice the difference. And and when you're there, like I'm up there with like Brad Fanshaw from Shift and Steer, and and he ran Boyd Coddington wheels and had you know three or four big SEMA builds and won the GM Design Award, the Ford Design Award. We're walking around that place all the time, and uh, he's, you can see him go, oh, look at this car, look at that car, look at the difference in quality, just look at the paint, look at the build. Pete yeah. Shaporis was a good guy for that. Pete Shaporis was our original Pete, co host. Yeah. Uh, uh, you guys know about Pete, um, SoCal Speed Shop, and uh, from Pete and Jake's uh, before that, um, just a legend in the space, and uh, was the mentor for Jimmy Shine. Uh, we started our Shift and Steer podcast because uh, Pete was running the business and not getting his hands dirty, but was just full of stories. Um, and uh, so we started the Shift and Steer podcast uh, uh, around a lot of around Pete's stories. And uh, we took a trip, uh, Pete and I and Aaron Hagar and Brad Fanshawe, we took a trip to uh, I think we were in Syracuse. We went to the Syracuse Nationals, a huge event, big car show event. And then they have this um, sort of a great eight, uh, uh, the, the best of the best eight cars there, and they compete for the, for the top award. And uh, uh, Pete and I, uh, we did our podcast and stuff. We were walking around, and then Pete goes, hey, he goes, come with me. Let's look at the grade eight cars. He goes, I'm going to give you a lesson in, in, in car judging and building. I was like, I couldn't have been more excited That's awesome. to, to get this from Pete. So we're walking around the grade eight cars and he, and look, visually you're like, I can get it. I can get what they're doing with stance and wheel fitment and, and paint quality and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Pete's walking around going, oh, you see this? He goes, they cut the side glass for this thing, but look at the top of this glass. The top of this glass should be rounded, finished, polished. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I never even thought of that. He's just, yeah. he's just got an Detail eye for those oriented. details. Uh, and, and now that when you start to look around at some of these cars that go across the auction block, especially the ones that were built, you know, this not talking about the classic cars that were restored, I'm talking about the cars that were, were built. And this is what really starts to separate the best hot rod builders from you know, a lot of the others. I'm not saying they're, they're bad. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of hot rod builders. That, listen, it, it, it falls a lot on the customer as well, as, as we all know this. And you'll see a 32 hot rod come out of SoCal Speed Shop and go, that was $200,000. You're like, hey man, it's just a 32 Roadster. Like I've seen those before. You know, my guy down the street built me one that I love for ninety thousand, and and you're like, and I thought ninety was a lot. It's like, okay, and you should have that. That's a good deal for you. But park your ninety thousand dollar one next right to the next SoCal to one. one that's two hundred thousand, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and start You'll calling see the around immediately, and you will see the difference. And this is why we we've said this before: is is go out and see these cars live. Go to the Peterson Museum. Go to these museums. Uh, go to, uh, you know, some of the big car auctions, walk around. You don't need to buy a car at Barrett Jackson, buy the ticket, walk around and really kind of look at some of the cars the same way we feel about racing as well. Go to the racing events and hear and smell what's going on. Uh, when we well, no, can, we're all like allowed to. There. Yeah. There's nothing like just being there, man. You know that. Yeah. And, and, uh, I, I, I think, uh, you'll really start to see what we're talking about. But anyway, I love this partnership. I love this partnership between Classic Recreations and Speedcore because we like both of those companies. We like the quality of work that they've done and their work, how long they've been around speaks to 
the quality of what these guys done. I've been talking to the classic re recreation guys for, for I think the entire time they've been around for 10 years and they started yeah. out of the gate making good cars and understandably they've gotten better and more precise over the years. And this is part of that evolution doing a carbon fiber body and working with Speedcore, who is arguably the best in the business with this kind of stuff. It's exciting. Um, yeah. It's exciting. Even for the Dodge guy like me to see these Eleanor recreation cars. And yeah, it's awesome. You know, and uh, it, it allows these guys to, to create some stability and expand their business model. And as the business mm -hmm. side of things over here, um, I love that as well. It allows Speedcore to say, hey, we want to do some specialty projects and we're going to do a Goldberg car. We're going to do a Chris Evans car and a Robert Downey Jr. car. But you can't live off those one-offs. You can't <laughs> no. do it. You can't do it. Yeah, you can't no. do it. So uh, uh, just like you said, you know, hats off to Speedcore and, and – uh, uh, classic recreation. It looks if they for, could sell fifty or a hundred of these things, yeah. and uh, uh, I think that's that's good for them. And and now it got me excited because I saw the quality work on your stuff, and uh, and what they're doing here. They sent me the sketches. They sent me the the, the renderings of the carbon fiber stuff that they're going to be doing, and it's going to be fantastic. And now I'm thinking about the hood on my truck, and now I got to like. Call these guys up and go. Dude, you got to do it. You got to do, do it. The you carbon fiber it. hood. So just to, te cool. just, to, just to tease you a little bit, I'd asked you uh, uh, a number of episodes back about colored carbon fiber. Yeah. Remember I asked you about that? Well, that's what they want to play with with the twin turbocharger. So we're yeah. trying to incorporate some dark blue in there with the black and the exposed carbon. So, um, I, you know, I'm a I'm, – I prefer the all black, but uh, those guys are so creative. Um, I can't wait to see what they come up with. So I will let you see it as soon as I see it. And it should be and interesting. I, I'll tell you, your, your carbon fiber challenger that was at SEMA, I loved what they did with they blended the black paint because I know you wanted the black the right there behind you. The black paint with some of the exposed carbon fiber, then the whole thing clear coated, polished, and... Uh, uh, you know, for the guys watching the video, maybe you can show us a little bit of this. We'll see how it looks on the. Uh, it's on the video, dirty, but, but. Yeah, so this is you're seeing the 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 two chevrons, the stripes on the on the fender there. It's black paint, and then the the raw carbon fiber underneath. But the whole thing has just been finished and clear coated, and so you you basically wash and wax this car like you would any other. I love that look. And I kind of like that look for the hood of the truck. I like to do uh, sort of, uh, you know, like heat extractors or sort of some lightweight vented hood because we're doing the big, the big horsepower and the supercharger and doing some sort of stripe that maybe just, uh, you know, twin stripe or single stripe that maybe kind of separates sort of a hockey stick style. Doesn't need to go down the rest of the truck. It could just be done on the hood. I don't want an all carbon fiber hood. I just want to be able to show enough that you you know that there's some attention to detail going on with the heat extractors and it's a carbon fiber hood. I think it's a cool well, idea. Well, it's a cool touch. Yeah, you, there's no question with their attention to detail and your knowledge of what you want, then you guys can come up with something really kick-ass for that truck. Guaranteed. Um. Speaking of, we got it over, uh, dropped the truck off yesterday to our friends over at Galpin Auto Sports, and uh, they are open in some limited capacity. Uh, the dealers as well, they're, you know, selling some cars and got all the things in place to do it as, as contactless as possible. And uh, I dropped off the truck and uh, a, a bed full of, of parts. And uh, the guy came out and he waved to me. And he was like, hey, Matt, good to see you again. Throw me the keys uh, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. And I said, great. And uh, I, we, we've touched, us, touched on this many times before, but just the, the recap is uh, the vehicle speed sensor, you know, so we're putting the new tone ring in the differential. I had custom axles made by Mark Williams because since the axles have to come out, might as well get the bulletproof axles put in there. Um, getting the air well. conditioning fixed. Right, yeah, because uh, especially because <laughs> you just did the you did the differential in your car, and the guys from uh, uh, from uh, Gearhead had to fly out and and do the whole swap. Um, oh, you had to throw it back on me. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, so I talk to these. Preventative measure. Pre and preventative I, so measure. We're eliminating the C clips on the on the axles, um, but we're not doing the C clip eliminators that you can buy because they'll leak under harsh uh, road racing or autocross. Mm -hmm. They're meant for drag racing. So the the way to do it is you take you imagine the the axle differential housing and you have the the ends where the brakes all attached mm -hmm. to it. Well, they have new end caps basically that they sent us. Um, and all designed to fit and work with the axle package, but you got to cut the, the the ends off of your housing and weld these new ones on. Now, sure, you know my guy in the shop, their guy in the shop can do it, but really the right way to do it is is they're going to drop the whole rear end out of the car. They're going to send it to uh, uh, one of their local uh, uh, suppliers that has jigs made. So it's it's a perfectly instead of instead up. of you doing it, you guys instead of me it. doing it or and me going to the it shop and comparing, yeah, we spoke yeah, about right. this. Yeah. Right, I could go to the shop and have our guy Sean at the shop do it, and he's going to say, "Yeah, I don't feel good about doing this underneath the truck and seeing if it's straight and 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 us trying to make sure everything's in place while he's measuring it." Uh, he wouldn't want to do it that way, and he'd end up building a jig, so and we'd have to do it. So this is the right way to do it. Uh, so getting that done, and then uh, uh, so the rear end hopefully will be done. The air conditioner will be done, and of course I've said it a million times. The part I'm excited about is uh, is getting the steering done, cutting out the frame, getting rid of that steering box, putting the new quick ratio box in there. And uh, I was talking, so I talked to Brad again on shift and steer. He did the same steering box modification on one of his El Caminos, a project he built, a SEMA car he built years and years ago. And there wasn't mm -hmm. any rack and pinion conversions or anything at the time. There wasn't even a quick ratio steering box available. He had to get one from some other car, forgot what it was, some sort of a fairly rare like racing car. And it would kind of, it was close to the dimensions like what I'm doing. And he had to cut and weld and get it to fit. And his El Camino that he still has, He's like, you will love it. It is a night and day difference. Going four turns lock to lock down to two and a half turns lock to lock. He says it makes all the difference uh, in the world. So uh, the guys at Gas said, we're going to do it. You got to be a little patient with us because we're experimenting and our fabricators are doing this for the first time ever. But I, I want to bring you this news. So no one out there is paying more attention to the mods on this truck than our buddy Stone Cold Steve Austin, because he's obsessed with his 95 Bronco. Yes, he is, and he's gonna copy you. And, and every time I post you're something- the guinea pig. Every time I post something on Instagram, five minutes after the post, I get a call or get a text. Hey buddy, how you doing? <laughs> hey Steve, what's, what's up? up? Yeah, he's like, uh, saw your post, yeah. So tell, tell me what you're doing with the steering, man. Because, you know, I got the Bronco. I was like, yeah. He's like, I love what the, you did with the steering wheel. That wrap looks great. Uh, where'd you get that done? It's like, I'm thinking about doing something. Are you keeping the airbag? And then I get another call and he's like, hey, man, uh, what are you doing with the steering? And uh, what are you going to do with that? And then, then like, you're like, oh, the I got I to gotta go, dude. I got like a <laughs> life to live over here. And, you know, you're talking about cars all the time. He's, he's really <laughs> engulfed in it. It's awesome, man. It's really cool to see how he's changed over the past, I don't know, five years with it. I mean, he he's really is. He's having fun. It's awesome. It's he, cool to see him blossom in the car world. You know, he's, he's having a good time. You know, what I love about it, uh, what I love about Steve, and I think you've noticed this as well, is so he's got his a Broken Skull Ranch in Nevada, um, and he turns out he's not too far from Aaron Hagar. Now, he met Sammy Hagar. They were doing a show together and never met Aaron. and very easy, doesn't have to be complicated. I shoot both of those guys at joint tax. Aaron meets Steve, Steve meets Aaron. Next thing you know, I'm doing a Zoom chat with uh, Aaron for the Shift and Steer podcast. And Steve Austin There's walks Steve. in from the background. He's yeah. like, hey guys, mind if I sit in? Super easy, super casual. They uh, spend uh, a day together. They finish, visit a bunch of car shops. And the thing about Steve that I was saying is, is he wants to know more about cars so he's just going out there to all these cars and coffee events and and stopping by at different shops just based on recommendations and referrals 
and going in and talking to these guys. Show me what you're doing. Show me what you're working on. Tell me why you're doing this. He's just yeah. a sponge of learning. Yeah. And cool. uh, I love that because that's how we all kind of got into this. Mm -hmm. And I, I know he's had an appreciation for cars. And it's interesting because we, we talk to so many people, we interview so many people, and a lot of people's story is the same is, you know, I was introduced to cars as I was a kid. And I, when I was a teenager, I started working on cars and kind of fell in love with it. Sure, my mm -hmm. career went this way or that way, but I've always had this love of cars. We've all been down that road. Steve is uh, 50, 50 something, 50-ish. And, and now he's living that, that childhood, childhood version of us. You know, he's appreciated the cars, but now he's got the time and the resources. And, and he's like, why aren't I, well, I should be learning more about this stuff. So he's going through seeing him turn into a kid while he's going through this stuff it has been absolutely fascinating for me to watch and the conversations that I've had, you've had, all the good stuff. So uh, I love that about him and he's having a good time with it. In a nutshell, like you said, it's, it's, it's what's cool about the car world. You know, you can see it kind of blossom right in front of your eyes from inception to conception of what he likes, you know, and then follow through. I mean, we're seeing him build cars, which is really cool, man. It's awesome. It, it is. You know, I, we've got to reach out to him uh, since we're doing the, the Zoom podcast. we got to ask him to come in and be a guest, if, if only for a few minutes on the show. My concern well, is, well, is he talks he, so much. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know it's, but, you know, that's, a, that's not a bad thing. Sometimes you got to squeeze information out of people. With Steve, I mean, you just have to stop him from giving you information. <laughs> But uh, um, he, he and I may be spending a little bit more time together here fairly soon. So, uh, um, yes, and we'll, I, we'll, I know a little bit about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk. let you guys wait to talk. We'll talk, about that. man. We'll, we'll, we'll turn it into some cool car ventures uh, around your neighborhood. Um, anyway, it'll be, it'll be exciting to do. So, uh, all right, I'm kind of losing track of time. I'm not really sure where we are on time. So, if Chris is there, he's gonna give us a little heads up on what we're doing with with timing um but anyway i, I love can't this, i can't this. believe your your first thing isn't the all electric uh uh what is it the uh all electric drag pack 1400 horsepower uh mustang that they built yeah well because we we saw that at sema and we we touched on that and i think now they're bringing it out there and they're and they're and they're finally they're they're driving uh the car um is it electric cobra jet that's cool it's man yeah. Electric Cobra Jet Mustang. Um, it's, it's cool because the videos have popped up in April of them running it on the drag strap. And it's funny because we've all been to the, to the drag races before, uh, you know, friends with Ron Caps and all the guys over there and Leah Pruitt and, and uh, the Coletta team. And, and they've been so nice to us uh, touring uh, all their pits and, and dragging us down, uh, of course, all the guys at Jegs that we work with, they're, they're blowing like, hey, our eardrums. Yeah, yeah, they're like, we're gonna run the car, walk out with us, like walk out onto the drag strip, and it's so incredibly loud. And then you watch the videos of the electric Cobra Jet. You go up there, you hear the big burnout. You don't hear any engine going on, and this thing shoots down like a missile down the drag strip, and you don't really hear anything. Um, but uh, first thing looks, you do is you check your audio on your computer. I know you're like ah, what's what's going on but anyway it's fantastic uh, to see it's it. cool to finally see it run down that 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 was cool yeah that's what i thought was cool um now here's a little bit of 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 bad news um and i bring this up because we're, we're such good friends with mclaren um we love their yeah. cars and uh I, I love what they were doing with the company and still fairly new the street car division um, and unfortunately, this pandemic, this coronavirus pandemic, is taking a huge hit on that market. And they're such a still a relatively small company that it's tough for a company like that to float without selling cars. And because sales and, and stuff have been down, basically non-existent, uh, of course, dealers are were shut down for months and months. It looks like McLaren is uh, doing everything they can to 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 get through this pandemic, like like a lot of businesses. Uh, but they're going to have to cut about twelve hundred jobs, and that's going to be across the entire McLaren uh, uh, 
corporation, meaning um, from Formula One to design and engineering and, and whatnot. Um, hopefully, uh, they'll be able to recover and bring those people back. And they may have to go uh, as far as mortgaging some of their assets. They have their their facility, they have their manufacturing facility, which I'm sure is worth a ton. And it's a great idea to do something like that, especially with with different programs and interest rates and stuff that you can do now that are that are favorable. Um, and then also their car collection. They have an impressive car collection of their own stuff. You know, McLaren mm -hmm. F1s, which are eighteen job, million dollars yeah. or twenty million dollars or something right now. Uh, that's a lot of money. You'd have to kind of mortgage that stuff. And if you can do it at a low rate, uh, that's the way to do it. Now, this is this is not an uncommon move. If you think about what Ford did during the first economic crunch, uh, I think it was two thousand eight. They leveraged their assets instead of borrowing government money. And then they rebuilt and, you know, got all their stuff back and owned it again. And now uh, they're, they're able to do that again. I mean, just the Ford logo alone, if you say, basically like going to the pawn shop and going, hey, I got a Ford logo, don't <laughs> yeah. sell it. But you could basically, we'll transfer ownership temporarily until we you know, you, until we can pay back the loan. And they- did. I'd say it's more than worth holding on to. Yeah. yeah, it's more than worth holding on to for sure. So uh, I think McLaren can overcome this. I hope they do. Uh, like we said, we're, we're, we're friends with a lot of the guys at McLaren. Um, love them, love the cars. They've been uh, very gracious to us, letting us uh, film with them and shoot cars and drive cars. And, uh, uh, you know, if there was a way to help, I would love to, but I don't know how. I don't have that kind of money, guys. Sorry. So how can, so I read uh, on the news that, uh, that news about McLaren, but how can a company like Lotus be prospering at this time? What, how do you, how do you explain that? One? Right. Um, because Lotus uh, has a new owner. They have a well-funded owner, uh, Geely, I believe, uh, out of China that owns them and a couple of other companies. And, uh, that company is large enough to have cash reserves and can make some adjustments, cutting some expenses, and they're able to fund Lotus. Lotus, it seems like a huge budget, but not compared to the parent. No, company, right? yeah, no so, question. So they can keep them afloat and they can sell a, a few cars. And, and so they basically went to mom and dad and said, may we borrow some money please which is understandable i remember but, the lead when we you had the lead designer on a couple of weeks ago yeah yeah we had yeah, uh, russell Hunt. yeah yeah and he said look that's a good that's a good move because he's been he's been there for forever and he's yeah. been through all of the ups and downs and the different owners and he said this is the one he feels the best about because it is a company that says we do want to commit funds to you but we don't really want to put our hand in your business model. So, you know, we believe in the management. So you guys do your thing and we're going to help with it financially and together we'll build something fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. uh, another company that's struggling a, a little bit is uh, Aston Martin, not just mm -hmm. in sales, but uh, their, their CEO, their, their kind of very outspoken CEO um, has left the company. But in an interesting move, the former head of AMG is going to be the new CEO of Aston Martin. Hmm. I don't know the guy, but I like the idea. We know that Aston Martin partnered Has up had with a AMG. relationship with them anyway, yeah. Yeah, we, they partnered with them on engines and electronics and technology. And by extension, I think was able to dip a little bit into the Mercedes Benz coffers as far as, you know, some of the, uh, some of the, the bits and pieces. Like we talked about it uh, when I was just driving the, uh, the Aston Martin DBS Superleggero. Love the car. It's a great GT Cruiser, incredibly fast, sounds great. The interior is gorgeous. Leather is gorgeous. Um, but I was a little surprised uh, that it didn't have, you know, things like Apple CarPlay and I yeah. said, hey, guys, what's going on with CarPlay? And they said, it's just one of the deal points in our agreement with AMG. 
that they need to run a previous software package in the infotainment yeah. systems to not be competitive with some of the, the, the AMG GT, for example, if you're going to cross shop the GT with a Vantage or something, you can have it, but only for a limited time. So the 2021 uh, DBS will have CarPlay. All the new models will have CarPlay. It was just one of the deal points. And the Aston Martin DBX, which is their SUV that I'm starting to see more and more, and I'm liking it more and more, and that's coming out later in the year. And, uh, and we've been told by our friends at Aston Martin that we will get a look at this car. We will be able to drive this thing. Um, and I think uh, that will be fun and potentially be a very positive game changer for a company mm -hmm. like Aston Martin. Because, you know, the increased sales, like we talked about, we've seen with Porsche and, and, and anybody who's making an SUV. Um, so anyway, we well, hope they must think so. well. Yeah, yeah they I, must think absolutely. so because they're, they're doing it. Ferrari's going to be doing it. So there's, there's something there. Uh, and I know we've gone through this, but, uh, uh, you know, the, before we wrap up, the Alfa Romeo Giulia that I drove uh, recently, I drove the, 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 the loaded version, but um, the all wheel drive uh, version with the smaller engine. And I talked about um, how I liked the car, but I liked, and the Quattrofolio was the 505 horsepower version. I liked it. And I was always saying that I, the car is meant to be driven fast. The way the brakes are, they're like a little touchy at low speed and they kind of bite a little bit at a stoplight and you really got to feather it to get the nice feel. But at high speeds, the, it's fantastic. When you put it into its race mode and it's paddle shifting, it's fantastic. And that's just me hitting the canyons and doing whatever uh, that you can within reason. Um, but I never had a chance to really get anything on the track. And I just imagine that the excitement of cutting the canyons, carving the canyons in a car like that, what would it be on the track? So um, uh, our, my buddy, uh, Jeremy Fry, who's a stunt driver, did Baby Driver, he did the John Wick movies, Fast and Furious movies, just the coolest guy, nicest guy, uh, family man, lives in the area. He sent out a, uh, a note to me, um, I didn't even know it was like for me. I thought I was just on the list accidentally. Uh, and he said, hey, I'm going to get a bunch of my stunt car buddies. We're going to go to the streets of Willow. Who oh, wants Jesus. In? No and, way. And then I got a call from him yesterday morning. He called me on the phone early, like 8 in the morning. And he's like, hey, man. I'm like, why? He's like, why are you ignoring my text? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You, 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 you sent a text out to all your stunt guy buddies. He's like, yeah, come to Street to Willow with us. We want you to go. And I said, well, I, you know, my truck is in the shop and I didn't do the steering. I don't know if I can bring it out there. And uh, he's like, well, find something. So I called uh, our guys at Dodge and Alfa Romeo. And I said, hey, uh, I got an opportunity to hit Streets of Willow. What do you got? And they said, how about the Alfa Romeo Stelvio SUV Quattrofolio? So it's the 505 horsepower SUV. And the one they sent me has like the giant 15 inch carbon ceramic disc brakes and the bread <laughs> package. And uh, uh, so I got the hottest little SUV, which I believe uh, Car and Driver, Motor Trend, and Edmonds, I think they were all testing that thing at zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds. Jesus. It pulls pull 0.94 Gs in the turns. Good God. And so I'm going to hit streets of Willow with my Sirius XM radio and my air yeah. conditioning on. And uh, and four people in the car be like, hey, we're going to hit streets of Willow with the whole team of stunt drivers in the back of the, in the back Dude, of this. Dude, that's uh, awesome. SUV. Good for you. So, uh, so we're, we're in the studio now recording this on Wednesday, and I'm going to go hit that on Thursday. So next week I'll give you guys a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of recap. And, and this week with Adam as well because – I'm going to hit uh, the track and then drive straight back to the studio and record a Good show right. with Adam. So, so we'll talk about it uh, there as well. But anyway. We'll be safe, man. Uh, it should be good. It'll be fun. I know we all miss doing a little bit of that, a little bit of getting out on the track and, and doing a little autocrossing. So we're going to do our little social distancing version of, of a track day. Obviously, no, no spectators, no additional crew, and it's just everybody in their cars and, and helmets and and uh and uh 
and he's got his flag crew and corner workers and stuff all out there to make it safe. I'm going to be so embarrassed because I know you, you worked on so many productions with these great just, uh, stunt just guys. Just have fun. They, they've, had, they've had hundreds of hours of seed time and we haven't. So just go out and have a good <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm going to be the slowest one out there, but with the biggest grin on my face for Absolutely. sure. I love doing Absolutely. these things. Um, uh, anyway, all right. What, we're going to wrap it up. What else are you working on? How's the ranch? It's awesome, man. Uh, Surveyor is out next week and uh, breaking ground uh, the week after that for the Goldberg Garage. I posted, you know, the first little rendering that I had the cojones to put up on social media of it. So Goldberg's Garage on Instagram, go check it out, man. It's uh, it's going to be awesome. Dude. I can't wait. That and Gearhead guys um, are tearing into the motor of the, of the Charger. And uh, we got about 45 days and then they'll send it up to speed core speed core. will do the wide body conversion on it. And then uh, it'll be at Goldberg's garage. Fantastic. Uh, oh yeah. There's the, uh, there Chris it is, is showing man. us, Chris is showing us the runner. Man, it's massive. It's going to be fantastic. Boy, it's good. You got all that land out there. <laughs> it's an optical illusion. It's only 168 feet long. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. It's uh you know, Metron Garage, I've talked about them, you know, at length. Um, go to their Instagram page. They just opened one up. Like I said, I just posted this today. I'm going to be posting a lot of, lot more renderings of it. It's a, it's a cool collaboration. I got a lot of the sponsors, you know, that you know and I know and that have worked with over the years. And I'm going to dedicate certain bays to them. And it's going to be a great collaboration. And uh, we'll be shooting some car show content out there, man. And, and we'll have a little... Uh, um, a little sound studio in there too so yeah that'll be good when you sit down with a group like metron and, and you say what can we do uh i get it there's some concept ideas you want to build a garage and then uh do they start with like hey you know here's sort of a budget range what we can do for this range what we can do for this range and then you pick or do you go in there and go uh my dream is you know i need a house someday i don't know 50 cars and i need a gym and this is how much land i have and then they say this is what it's going to cost and then you say i gotta get back to work <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and hence goldberg putting his tights on again but yeah, you know that's right it's funny how that works because we we had a conversation where you're like i'm building a huge garage a month later i just re-signed with wwe <laughs> <laughs> hey man we all do we <laughs> it's a means to an end, right? I mean, hey, yeah. um, I, 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 I had some aggression that needed to be placed, you know, in a legal way. So I've got to put my tights on again. No, so, but, but the, uh, but yeah, the ba process, back to, back to the work. process, the pro, you know, it can be done both ways, either way. Um, the fact is I had, uh, my desired needs, you know, it has to be huge enough to, uh, house X amount of cars, but equally it had to be able to house you know, at, at least a 2,500 square foot workout facility, which is equally important in my life. Actually, right. it's more important in my life. One's a passion, one's, a, one's an obsession, and they're both obsessed. Anyway, um, uh, it, the, it, it's a huge process, man. You've been through it with Adam. You, yeah. you know, you guys went through it with us with Garage Mahal, which is a millionth as detailed as what we're doing, whether it's yeah. computer generations, um, you know, or, or, I mean, there's so many details, whether it's the flooring, whether it's the walls, you know, the, the material, the color, the freaking everything. And this thing's going to be huge. And the sponsors that you're dealing with and, you know, the color scheme. And then the, the my God, the pad right now is, is, is the, the first issue. You know, this yeah. thing's got to be gigantic. And then it has, it's only going to be laid once. So it has to fulfill all your needs. And you got to think backwards from all the issues that you've had in the past with stuff that you've built and seen other people build and you don't want to screw up and put x amount of money in a pad that you know falls short of what you want and then you got to add to it and it looks like shit later so i mean there's you you know there's so many different things the garage doors these garage doors are going to be so wide that they're going to be the, the load on them is going to be so much that there's only a limited amount of ways that we can put a motor on it or we have to change the styling of the garage door. We're, we're thinking about looking at the, the ones that the bifolds that, that collapse yeah. like an airplane hanger. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's a lot of thing, you know, drainage, uh, uh, central vac, 
you know, all kind yeah. of different things. How am I going to get all the weights up to the mezzanine, for God's <laughs> right. sake? Yeah, you, know, you need um, a forklift for that. So you need to probably load the weights off before the building's even done. So I got to order the weights an amount of time and kind of, you know, shoot in the dark as to when it's going to be completed. And, oh, it hasn't started yet. So there's, it's just, a, you know, these are issues that, you know, I'm lucky enough to have to deal with. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge process. And I'm very involved in what I, what, you know, I have built out here because it's got to be specialized. It's like anybody. You know, it's a dream come true to be able to have something to house all my cars in one spot. Um, yeah. Goldberg's Garage in California didn't even house all my cars in one spot. They were segmented throughout the property. You know, so um, it's going to be great, man. It's going to be a dream come true. And it's why I, I work. It's why I bust my ass all the time. And uh, it's why you get up and do what you do every day. So um, yeah. it's well, my, it, my, my version of a dream come true. It's, it's exciting. I love that you're, you're getting this uh getting this done on, you know, you, you've earned it and, um, you know, literally got your ass kicked along the way to make it happen. <laughs> but I kicked most everybody's ass. Yeah, that's it. You did kick more ass than you take the beating, but, uh, <laughs> but these guys are, these guys are great, man. They're, they're a group of, of good guys. They're good old boys. They're Where are they Kentucky. based out of? They're out of Kentucky. 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 And you know, their, their specialty is, you know, the enormous, uh, uh, car washes, right? Yeah. The, the futuristic looking new car washes that you have out. And then they do personal garages, one, two car garages for people. They've never embarked upon something like this, I don't think. I mean, I think they may have done it once or twice before, but not to this, to this size. But all they do is just use their ingenuity and the multiplication table and just, you yeah. know, make things bigger. This beams, now, you know. Yeah. The idea of working with Metron is, is of course, their, their experience in doing this, but also um, they're going to be able to do as much prefab on this as possible, right? So in their oh, yeah. facility, they're going to be able to construct basically the whole building and Absolutely. then take it apart, load it up on flatbeds, bring it out there. So you talk about the foundation. So we talk about some prefab or tilt-up buildings, but... Uh, more and more really nice houses are turning into prefab. Um, oh yeah, and uh, we've looked at that as as well uh, over here. What they can do is they they design and build your house basically in a warehouse, uh, or build your building in a warehouse, and everything is precise. Uh, then they can take it apart, bring it out here, and assemble it in record time. Yeah. Do it on site in record time, but like you said, the foundation needs to be done. So, yeah. uh, you know, all the plumbing underneath that cement pad and the cement pad needs to be to spec and be able to hold the weight and future engagements like, hey, you're putting the gym up there, but if you're doing car stackers and, and you know, there needs to be a certain amount of uh, six inch pad, eight inch pads of cement, all kinds of crazy stuff. And they'll go there, they'll build it and uh and get it done uh quickly which is nice because once it actually shows up at your place you don't have to stare at it for 18 months going exactly. Man, i wish i could go in my garage you know so but it's but but that that positive in that it goes up so quickly provides a negative in that everything's got to be in place because there's not a lot of time from inception to completion you know right. of them erecting that building so i mean uh, how many air conditioners do you need? This is a trivia question. How many air conditioners is needed for a, a 14,000 square foot space? You know, I mean, it's, you know, do you go industrial, do you, you know, and then heating, you know, I, I, I don't, if it was not for my wife, I'd never turn my heater on in my house, but you know, yeah. per code, you have to have a limited amount, you know, you have X amount of, of heat capacity and X, X amount of square footage structure. And there's just so many things that I've never had to deal with. That you know, right. and, uh, and you're just, the bull by the horns. You're having to deal, and you're just scratching the surface on that because once you get into the permits and all the regulations oh. and how thick cement needs to be and fire codes and fire systems and by the way, a lot of those things that you have to do that you don't really think about, that shit's expensive. You're a <laughs> damn right it is. I'm doing you nothing know? but writing checks, you know. But yeah, it's just you know, like you, you look at all the things that you done. want. It, you, all the things that you want, you're like, oh, that's expensive. Then like, but these are all the things the government makes you have 
which I get it. You know, some of them are a little over the top, a little extreme, but then they're like, yeah, you know, this all has to be paid for as to well. Code. Yeah. <laughs> to code. And, you know, you, you've got the big structure and then you have all the, the uh, codes that you have to meet and all the checks that you have to write. And then it's not just the cost of the pad and cost of the, uh, of, you know, all the permits and then cost of the structure. You, you, you have to, you have to fill that structure, right? Yeah. With carpet, with <laughs> yeah. flooring, with this, with that, with, you know, there's so many different things. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a kick-ass process. It's a lot of fun. It's like building a car. It's like building yeah. a gigantic freaking car, but it's, it, you know, it, I don't ever want to have to build one again. And so you want to do it right. You would live from your, your, your past, you know, um, issues, you know, your uh, screw ups that you've done. I mean, I built a number of garages and I, I haven't done them, you know, to my specification by any means, but garage Mahal, you know, it gave me another, uh, gave me the ability to build a lot more and, you know, screw up and then be able to rectify it. So yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I get the right, you know, charging, charging capacity. How do you, how do you charge 30 cars and then hide it all? Right. Oh, so yeah. that in, in and of itself is just a pain in the ass to kind of deal with. But I'm, you know, again, I'm even I'm just, lucky to be even in just the power, the load, I guess. I mean, maybe, maybe you're going to be doing a bunch of solar panels and stuff out there as well to, but now Absolutely. we have solar panels and battery backups. Bingo. And, you know, <laughs> you know everything. You so. When it's one thing leads to another, you know, so. Right. And then, and if you, it, you know, and if the money makes sense, the investment makes sense, like, do you do enough solar panel and battery backup to do 50% capacity? Or can you build it large enough to be completely off the grid and yeah. have it kind of live on its own? Certainly, that makes more sense. You're in Texas, you got a lot of sunlight, you're on a huge piece of property. Uh, that's all yours, you know, to, to make that thing almost standalone a bunch of solar panels enough that's to exactly the that's exactly what i'm doing i have to build yeah. i have to dig another well specifically for that building as you know as yeah. opposed to the three wells i have on the property already but you know the, the listeners and viewers are going to be like you know he's bitching and moaning about something that's no, yeah look, but we get it like first it, of it all, is what it is first of all we love this thing we love the unattainable for most people that's why we watch videos of crazy supercars and and, and things <laughs> like that and you know, in lifestyles of the rich and famous, you know, like that's why that show is successful. And uh, I do have a lot of respect and admiration for, for, for the men and women that bust their ass and work hard and are able to go and, uh, and finally get, you know, some of the toys that they, they want to be able to get. So I, I, I'm, I'm down with that completely. Look, this is why we're doing a car show. We're not doing a politics oh, show. Or, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, you know? Like, do I need a Ford Lightning? That's, you know, no, but it's fun and I enjoy it. And I just had to preface the conversation with that statement. That's all. Yeah. And so now, now we can keep going. But um, yeah, it's, all right. it's, it's well, we're awesome gonna... pain in the ass to be dealing with, but Metron's awesome. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're good. Let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much and uh, good luck with the project. And next week, next week will be fun. We'll give you guys an update on the track day. And uh, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and say, Everything's fine. I gave back the uh, Alfa Romeo in one piece and I drove home fine. Um, no problems. I've crossed your fingers. And, uh, and that's it. And then we'd love to hear from, from you and Steve Austin at, at, uh, at your, uh, the projects you guys are working on. So hopefully soon everything will soon. come together. Very soon. Um, all right, buddy. Thank you. Until next time, uh, keep the air and the spare and the bag and the wheel. Be safe this weekend, dude.